Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. Gannets falling from the sky like bombs dropped from a B-2 bomber with bass exploding on bunker just off the beaches. I actually got a text from a buddy of mine this week fishing off of Monmouth County. He said they are out on the fence, some in tight. The ones in tight aren't too responsive, but you catch here and there. I'm kind of hoping that here and there turns into everywhere by this weekend. I'm Jim Hutchinson with the New Jersey Delaware Bay edition of the Fisherman Magazine. I'm here in one of the most beautiful and remote locations in all of New Jersey. I'm at the end of Jersey Avenue down here in Fortescue. And the reason for being here at the end of the road, right on the edge of the Egg Island management area is, well, first of all, I'll tell you the November edition of the Fisherman Magazine. Did you read the tagging story? Those two tags that we put in Cora and Rona. Those were a pair of jumbo fish, 45, 46 inches, tagged at the end of May, early June. An incredible journey to the offshore grounds. And those two tag returns we got earlier this fall, all the stories in the November edition. Well, lo and behold, election day, we got tag number three popped up a few hundred yards from where I'm standing, right along the edge of Fortescue Beach. That third fish that we tagged with a uh, Wildlife Computers Mini PSAT satellite tagging device, caught July 3rd off of Montauk, set to stay in that fish for four months. Well, lo and behold, November 3rd, election day, that tag became uh, undone from that fish. So that fish is somewhere, uh, I would assume, somewhere out here in the Delaware Bay along the Delaware Bay Shore, not far from Fortescue. Uh, if, if you remember, go back 10, 12 years, if you would ask me where one of the best places in early November, Election Day, onto Veterans Day, where I could go to catch a 50 or 60 pound striper, this would have been a place I would have told you to go chunk. Lo and behold, maybe we got a slug of stripers here. Independence, just a few hundred yards from where I'm standing. I actually have my GPS because we got the GPS update on Tuesday. We got another lat long update uh, from the folks at Wildlife Computers when that uh, tag started pinging the Argo satellite, which goes around the Earth every 24 hours. So the last satellite reading that I have on that puts that fish somewhere behind me. And I'll tell you, that's important to remember because there's three big takeaways as we figure out where this fish actually went over the last four months. Takeaway number one, that fact that we used to talk about tussies, we used to talk about the 20 and the 60 foot slew, we used to talk about chunk and bunker here. Maybe the Cape May rips, right? Well, it seems like at least one big fish that was up there in Montauk is down here. And that's takeaway number two. There was a great bite in Montauk for much of the season out on the east end of Long Island. Uh, even along the south shore, the surf casters in the Montauk area, great fishing, but jumbo stripers between Montauk and Block Island this summer when we did our tagging. Could those Mon Montauk monsters have entered Delaware Bay? That would be great news for the folks out of Delaware, out of Lewis, out of Cape May hitting the rips, and of course here in Fortescue. Takeaway number three is we need that tag. While that tag is definitely feeding the Argo satellite, the information inside is invaluable. We can learn so much about that striped bass independence if we can get that tag back. So it's an Easter egg hunt. Somewhere, I hope along these shores, is that mini PSAT device. It's worth $500 cash to whoever finds it. Plus, we've got a whole kit and caboodle of tackle that we're putting together. We wanna find that tag. If you find it, you can see on the screen what it looks like. Uh, as I was talking to Captain Jim on the Miss Fortescue, they've been sailing. He said it looks almost like a light bulb. Yeah, it does. It looks like a, a small spray painted light bulb. See if you can find that tag. We want to find that tag. Uh, and again, a $500 cash bounty. If you find that, the number's on there to call Wildlife Computers, Gray Fish Tag Research. You can also contact me, but I plan on walking these beaches a little bit. Talk about a needle in a haystack. The full tag results as this uh, information starts to unfold, collected by the satellites, or lo and behold, if we can find that tag, we hope to have the entire migration pattern on independence coming up in the January 2021 edition. So that's the big news that brings me down to one of my favorite places in the state of New Jersey, Fortescue, uh, down here on the Delaware Bay Shore. But let's get on to the coastal striper report, shall we? Uh, because our tackle shops and captains, at the, they're, they're reporting to us at the fisherman.com, our weekly reports, have some great things to report. Bob Matthews at Fisherman's Den in Belmar, he starts us off by saying all up and down the coast, our boats out of Belmar have been experiencing some of the best striped bass fishing in years. 
Bobby says the bulk of these stripers are up over 50 pounds, so there's a lot of releases here, but if you're looking for that trophy striper to catch, release, and release safely, I tell you, now's the time to do it. Live lining, jigging, trolling, uh, also on the beach uh, with guys throwing plugs as well. Uh, James Sanfilippo, he was out on the, Miss Mo, uh, the uh, big mohawk just the other day, caught and released this jumbo fish, so that's good to see. Again, last week's video, we talked about those bunker schools. Um, when I've talked to some folks this, way, this week as well, don't just think bunker, because there's a lot of sand eels out there as well, depending on where you're fishing, but you wanna be in there to uh, make sure you're matching the hatch with the sand eels as well. If you're not catching them on the swim shads or you're not catching them live line bunker, but you're marking them on the machine, drop a jig down there. Bob DeSantis and his grandson Jack were out on the down deep. And Bob let me know that Jack had his first keeper on eels fishing out of Sandy Hook, around the Sandy Hook eel, uh, area, uh, 40 pound plus fish again on down deep. So congratulations there. You can look for those rolling bunker schools and stripers uh, all along the Monmouth County coast uh, and also on the Raritan and hopefully sooner or later we get them down uh, Central Jersey, South Jersey, Ocean, Atlantic and Cape May County. Only a matter of time now. And again, like I said, uh, I would hope that somebody's gonna go out and do a little prospecting at the Cape May Rips or chunking out here on Delaware Bay and uh, give me some good news in the next couple of days. I have been hearing some of those bass rolling in about 12 feet of water out through the Shrewsbury Rocks on out to the line. Uh, the Bukowski boys and their girlfriends were out this week on the Mution. Uh, you probably know Luke from over there at Fisherman Supply if you want more intel on that. But Luke's dad, Ray, told me that some of those fish were caught on the diamond jig, as you can see in that photo. So obviously those fish are not just on bunker, but they're also on the sand eels as well. Captain Jimmy Frieda of Shore Catch confirmed that with me this week. He sent a picture of Chuck Ferimsky of the Fly Fishing Show, Chuck's biggest bass ever on the fly. Jimmy said it's not just the bunker, but they were into a boil. The bass were blowing up on sand eels. So again, surf casters, keep that in mind. Make sure you have those teasers and tins in there just in case you're not having any look, luck on the plugs. I did have a lot of video res uh, response from last week's video forecast. I thank you very much on that. But that arrival of big fish on bunker, uh, a lot of folks said they got in on that bite. I mentioned folks from Atlanta County, for example, might want to travel up into Monmouth County to get on that bite. Some folks have done that. In fact, Jesse Blumquist, a skipper out of Margate, New Jersey, got into his largest striper ever a 51 and a half uh, released while live lining off of Sandy Hook good for you Captain Jess now that's not to say that those bass uh, aren't down in Atlantic Cape, uh, Atlantic and Cape May County of course so I mentioned out here but in fact talking to Andy at Riptide Bait and Tackle uh, he said uh, this 38 just under 38 inch keeper was caught by Mike Barachewski a 19 pounder and he plugged that up from the jetty there at Absecon on the Brigantine side so yes those fish are starting to filter out and again Looking at some of those surf caught bass, surf casters have been waiting, me, chomping at the bit, waiting to get in on those, on those fish. The idea is you really have to put in your time. Uh, go early, go often. Uh, the night bite has been working, but again, some of these folks are letting me know. Scott Pakin, he saw our report last week. I was talking about those tsunami heavy shads. Well, he followed that advice, went out and got his personal best, a 42 incher from the surf at night. So that's good, good sign. Now, it may be a bit of a spot burn here for those in the know, but Eric Olshagel, he also let me know that he got him, uh, got on him on the beach this past Sunday morning as well. And of course, our Nick, uh, our beach talk reporter, Nick Konicheski, said he's been putting in his time along the beach, Southern Ocean County, I would assume. Um, he's gotten uh, some fish on uh, some of those plastic plugs. So you, you're looking at the Swarters, the Bombers, the SP Minnows. But again, like I said, the needlefish, the poppers, make sure if you're getting out there with a plug bag, keep an assortment because you're not, you don't know what's going to work. It could be bunker, could be rain fish and spearing uh, could be some of those sand eels as well but uh, pack some of those colt snipers uh, I've been talking to some folks who love the colt snipers from Shim Sh uh, Shim Shimano hard to say right um, so again a variety of plugs to uh, mix and match but some are big some are small some are right there in the slot Andrew Hurdle he let me know schoolies on the night bite this week in the surf as well in the bay under the lights on the Yozuri jerk baits but of course what uh, what Andrew told me he said quote I love 
my black Danny in the surf. Now, if you're all about the catch and release on some of these stripers, because you're either catching small ones or you're catching some of those jumbles, jumbos, don't fret if you want to bring something home for dinner, because we still have that one tog bag limit here in New Jersey, and those tog are still set up on the inshore structure, which includes those jetties and bulkheads. In fact, VJ Singh was working Manasquan Inlet at Point Pleasant. Let me know about this tog. Uh, if you want some tips, some advice on fishing the jetties and groins where you can find them for some of those blackfish, uh, posted a video link on screen from our Long Island editor, Matt Broderick. He's got some good advice for rigging up with some of those crabs uh, on the jetty rocks for some of those tog. Again, tog limits will go up in New Jersey. We get a bigger bag limit in a couple of weeks. But as of this past Sunday, of course, our black sea bass limits are up in New Jersey. We are at 15 fish with a 13 inch bag limit. Looks like a real nice weekend ahead. So that's a good idea for you. Uh, this month, I would also expect not here, but a little farther east into Cape May County to, for folks to start chasing some of those speckled trout. November of 2019 was a phenomenal season for those specks, and I would imagine we're going to see that again. But if you look at the limits in New Jersey, you got a one speck bag limit because it meshes perfectly with weak fish. Hopefully that changes next year because there's no reason not to have a bigger si uh, bigger bag limit on the specks. But for this year, uh, treat your specks just like you would a weak fish. Again, I talked to uh, Captain Jim on the Miss Fortescue. They still had some good sized weak fish down here out of Fortescue until last week. Today, some short stripers and some blackfish. But again, there's some boats down here uh, that are still sailing. Uh, the, the Salt Talk, the Duchess, I saw them in port as well. So if you want to get down here and get in on that bite, certainly take advantage of it. And also, speaking of trout, make sure you take advantage of the fall stocking of trout in New Jersey and Delaware, because both states have done a tremendous job with stocking our freshwater streams, lakes, and ponds with uh, some freshwater trout. Roger Muller let me know that his, uh, his wife, Andrea, beat him up, beat up the trout fishing over the weekend uh, up there on the Raritan. So that's another great way to get out there with the family and enjoy some beautiful conditions we have coming up. I will tell you more about the weather for this weekend and how that shapes up here at the Jersey Delaware coast. But first, let's get a 60 second update on the Sweetwater with my friend George, Pocono Outdoors guy. Well, hey, thanks, Jim. You know, I don't think we could have asked for a tougher couple of days fishing. I mean, we had cold, wind, rain, even some snow here in the Poconos. It's a recipe to give any fish a bad case of that lockjaw. But I checked out with a couple of guys that are pretty aggressive and managed to get on some fish over this horrible weekend. I checked in with Jen Wong, and he said he was out catching some trout and even some bass, working aggressively a jerk bait. That's right, a jerk bait. And he got into some really beautiful trout, uh, a couple of them shown here here and even a really nice little largemouth bass. So put those uh, those jerk baits on your list guys for a tactic for this kind of rough weather. Now over here in Pennsylvania I checked in with regular Eric Goodstall. Now he's a fly guy, he's a big trout guy and those trout were certainly biting despite all this uh, horrible weather. Now Eric said he was using these nymphs for these smaller native browns and brook trout and being pretty successful at it too. But he said the egg pattern is going to going to really dominate over the next couple weeks. He's out tying a couple of these He'll be out this weekend hitting those big browns as well. So check out that egg pattern if you like throwing those flies. Lots of fishing going on. I think the weather this coming weekend is going to be much better than last week. So be sure you guys get out and get on them. From Pennsylvania, I'm George, your Pocono Outdoors guy. So looking more closely at that NOAA marine weather forecast for the weekend ahead, this is compiled midweek. Their midweek synopsis shows light seas and south-southwest winds Thursday and Friday, but turning westerly Friday night for Saturday and Sunday, which is great for spotting bait. You know, that west wind kind of flattens off the water. I tend to think the bunkers swim against the wind, so that brings them in close. And again, with those offshore wind conditions, if you're fishing along the beach, it's better to see those swirls and those dimples on the water. Uh, so definitely uh, a good time to get fishing. I'm thinking that Saturday is gonna be a fishing fiesta for me. Uh, a few of the head boats, the Jamaica, the Gambler, the Miss Barnegat Light, still trying to spot those weather windows to get offshore on the tuna grounds maybe get some swordfish as well. Honestly, conditions look wonderful heading into the weekend ahead. Um, so 
keep that in mind. Uh, this is a this is kind of getting to the the end of the offshore season. The weather plays havoc uh, in terms of getting offshore. But the next couple of days, according to the NOAA offshore weather forecast from the Hudson to Baltimore, it looks pretty shiny as far as getting out there. Whether you plan on a trip to the deep playing catch and release with jumbo stripers or taking advantage of those humpback sea bass, make sure you call those boats in advance. It's been a busy season. Uh, a lot of the boats are taking reservations in advance. You can't just show up the head boats for the most part so give those boats a call if you're looking for a boat to sail on go look at our fishing report section at thefisherman.com we have all the tackle shops and all the boats uh, in the state of new jersey and if you're down here along the delaware bay shore i would ask you to keep an eye out for that mini psat device that tag last tracked a few hundred yards or more someplace on where I'm standing. And again, if you can find it, whether it's washed ashore at this point or it's still bobbing along out there, it's worth $500 cash and a whole suite of prizes that we're working to put together. That battery in that tag lasts 10 days. So by the time you're looking at this, we have about six, seven days left of that tag uh, being able to transmit to the, to the satellites. If I get some better numbers, if we haven't found it by the time you're looking at this, as we get better numbers, I'll try to share it on the Fisherman Magazine's Facebook page. Consider it an Easter egg hunt, but we really want to get the tag back because there's so much more information we can find out inside those tags about striped bass and their migratory patterns. Again, pick up that November edition of the Fisherman Magazine because it has all the details on Cora and Rona the first two fish tagged, and by January, I hope to have a big story about what happens in Independence. We'll keep an eye out for that tag. Catch them up this weekend, and we'll see you again next week right here at thefisherman.com. Steigercraft boats, built by people who fish our waters. Serious English choose Steigercraft for their 40 years of boat building experience right here in the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic. Visit steigercraft.com for a dealer near you.